Hello, film enthusiasts. Today, we're delving into a 1963 classic that seamlessly combines suspense, romance, and a touch of comedy. This timeless gem promises to keep you on the edge of your seat throughout, wondering what makes it a favorite in the industry. Stick around, and we'll explore the enduring qualities that have made it a symbol in the film world. Now, about the magic of this movie, which classic Hollywood actor stole the show for you? Was it the charisma of one or the captivating performance of another? Share your favorite in the comments below, we're eager to know. Before you get lost in your memories, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic masterpiece? Share your stories in the comments because we'd love to relive those moments with you. Ready to uncover the tales behind this film? Hit that play button and let's embark on a journey filled with mystery and emotion. In 1963, a cool movie called Charade hit the screens, giving us a mystery to solve in the heart of Paris. Audrey Hepburn is Regina Lampert, discovering her husband's strange death and a bunch of bad guys after some money. To crack the case, she teams up with Cary Grant, playing the charming Peter Joshua. The pair of scenes make the story even more interesting as Regina and Peter dash around the city's famous spots. While they're busy uncovering the truth, their connection grows, adding excitement to their adventure. Meeting different people along the way adds layers to the story. As Regina and Peter dig deeper into the mystery, the suspense keeps you hooked. The movie mixes romance, humor, and suspense, making it a fun watch. Charade got lots of praise for its great story, top-notch acting, and the fantastic chemistry between Hepburn and Grant. With clever surprises and a stylish vibe, it became a classic in the suspense genre. So, if you're into movies with twists and turns, Charade is a good pick. In a surprising turn of events, the old puppet theater that stood since 1784 became a fancy theater called the Theatre du Palais Royal. People still love going there even in 2023 because it's so charming. On the DVD commentary for Charade, they revealed that Jacques Morin, who played Inspector Grandpierre, had someone else's voice instead of his own, which made his character more interesting. Audrey Hepburn, who often wore clothes by fashion designer Hubert de Givenchy, dressed in his outfits in many famous movies, including Charade. They worked together on lots of great films, showing off Hepburn's timeless fashion sense and Givenchy's amazing designs. In a smart tribute to post-war advancements, the drip dry suit featured in this movie highlights the fabric technique developed by Haspel, a suit maker from New Orleans dating back to 99. Introduced after the war, this outfit could be easily cleaned by washing and hanging to dry a lasting innovation still appreciated by discerning customers in 2023. Around 35 minutes into the film, there's a scene where Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn step out of a hotel elevator. Grant makes a clever remark about the street where you live. Interestingly, a year later, Jeremy Brett sings on the street where you live in another film, referring to Hepburn's character in My Fair Lady, creating a subtle connection between the two movies. The scenes at the stamp market take place at the Ron Point des Champs Elysees in Paris, France, offering a beautiful setting for the characters' pursuits. These small details add depth to the story, making it more engaging and memorable. In the early 1960s, a significant change occurred in the Universal logo, which made its debut in a notable film. This updated emblem featured a more realistic depiction of the world and space, including the belts around the Earth. Interestingly, this iconic logo remained consistent in Universal Productions until the early 1990s. The movie from that time brought together two actors who had previously shared the screen in another film. Despite a gap of a few years, their collaboration in this movie paved the way for another project they worked on together later on. Adding to the ensemble of the film were three actors who later received the Best Supporting Actor Oscar. One achieved this honor for a role in a different film, while the others earned it for their performances in subsequent years. In summary, this particular movie marked a cinematic milestone with the introduction of the new Universal logo and brought together a cast whose talents would be recognized with prestigious awards later on. Among the numerous films recognized for their portrayal of romance, Charade stands out as a notable entry acknowledged by the American Film Institute in 22. Although not crafted by Hitchcock, the movie features Grace Kelly, adding to her repertoire beyond the famed Hitchcock classics. Jacques Marin, who played Inspector Grandpierre in Charade, also shared the screen with Audrey Hepburn in How to Steal a Million. The convergence of talent and storytelling in Charade cements its place in cinematic history as a beloved tale of mystery and love. 
Intriguingly, many viewers mistakenly attribute the 1963 film to the legendary Sir Alfred Hitchcock, captivated by its suspense, Cary Grant's presence, the screenplay's structure, and its frequent plot twists. However, Hitchcock played no role in its creation, leading fans to dub it the best Hitchcock film Hitchcock never made. Notably, the movie marks the debut of actress Chantal Goya, adding a layer of significance to its cinematic history. The narrative takes an unexpected turn as it introduces a fresh face to the screen. A distinctive touch to the film unfolds during the dining boat scene, where the background music features a vocal rendition of the theme song charade. The lyrics, with only three stanzas, diverge from the published version. The second stanza takes a unique form, and in a blaze of light for you, Romeo K. Man, it was closing night the ending of the play. These elements combined contribute to the film's allure, elevating it beyond mere expectations. The confusion surrounding its directorship and the addition of new talent and musical nuances shaped the unique identity of this cinematic work. In the final chase scene, the characters enter a theater adjacent to the Palais Royal Colonnade, known as La Comédie Française. During a scene where Audrey Hepburn is smoking alone in her apartment, Cary Grant enters. His ears had to be covered with masking tape due to the backlighting making them appear red. Cary Grant sold the rights to his last films, including Charade, and invested in property development in Spain and Ireland. Cary Grant initially declined involvement in the film, prompting consideration for younger actors Warren Beatty and Natalie Wood. However, he eventually joined the cast of the 1963 movie. Audrey Hepburn and Walter Matthau navigate the now-defunct Les Halles marketplace in Paris, captured on film before its 1971 closure and replacement by a modern shopping mall. A subtle nod to Hepburn's birthday is found in the film when the date on Charles Possession's receipt is noted as May 4, 1963, the actress's 34th birthday. In this cinematic puzzle, the cast dynamics and the backdrop of a bygone Paris create a unique viewing experience. The charm of the storyline and the on-screen chemistry between the characters make the 1963 movie a memorable piece of cinema. In one scene, Cary Grant's character, Peter Joshua, and Audrey Hepburn's character, Reggie Lampert, have a conversation reminiscent of Grant's role in To Catch a Thief, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. The film cleverly utilizes Grant's past association with thievery to add depth to his character. The choice of the name Voss for the heroine's husband is significant, as it means fox in Lower German. Foxes are often associated with cunning and deception in various cultures, adding a layer of symbolism to the character. The subway scenes in the movie were filmed on Paris Metro Line 1, which originally ran from Chateau de Vincennes to Pont de Neuilly. Interestingly, this line has since been extended to La Defense, marking a change in the landscape of the city since the film's release. In one scene, Cary Grant was initially supposed to keep his clothes on during a shower, given his age and weight. However, they opted for him to shower fully clothed, finding it funnier. Despite being considered too old for the romantic lead, Grant's performance remains memorable. In the opening scene, Reggie asks her friend if her son can do something constructive. Interestingly, the actor who played her friend's son, Thomas Chalemsky, pursued a career in medicine and is now a successful doctor in Wisconsin. Grant's age didn't deter from his charm in the film, showcasing his enduring appeal and talent. Directed by Stanley Donen, this classic movie continues to captivate audiences with its blend of suspense and romance, offering a timeless viewing experience. Audrey Hepburn was originally set to star in a film called No Bail for the Judge, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, but dropped out due to pregnancy. This led to the project's abandonment. However, she later starred in a film called Charade alongside Cary Grant, often considered one of Hitchcock's finest works. Thomas Chalimsky's voice was dubbed by a French woman in Charade. Hepburn never singled out any film as her favorite, but spoke fondly of Breakfast at Tiffany's, Roman Holiday, Funny Face, The Nun Story, and Charade in interviews. She reportedly didn't enjoy working on The Unforgiven due to injuries and wait until dark due to stress. Despite this, she maintained professionalism and good relationships with her co-stars and directors throughout her career. In the movie, the voice of the U.S. Marine in front of the embassy was dubbed by screenwriter Peter Stone. 
Charade is also listed among the American Film Institute's 2000 list of the 500 movies nominated for the top 100 funniest American movies. Interestingly, despite having only two view it in suitcases, Regina wears five coats, four dresses, and three hats, all designed by Givenchy. It's a testament to the film's attention to detail and style. These quirks add layers to the characters and enhance the overall viewing experience. Nestled within the Criterion Collection, a beloved film holds a remarkable position as Spine 57. Directed by a notable figure in cinema, this movie has left a significant mark on American culture and history. The director, recognized for their impactful work, helmed four films that were honored by the Library of Congress for their cultural, historical, or aesthetic significance. In 2004, the American Film Institute spotlighted this particular film as one of the 400 nominees for the Top 100 America's Greatest Music in the Movies. The recognition was attributed to the film's contribution through a memorable song, solidifying its place in the rich history of American cinema. Directed by a prominent figure and nestled within a prestigious collection, this film, known for its cultural and historical impact, boasts a position alongside other cinematic gems. The American Film Institute's acknowledgement further reinforces the significance of this movie, particularly in the context of music and films. Imagine a scene where a stamp collector talks about the stamps he got from someone named Gene Lewis. He ends with 12 special stamps featuring Princess Grace. This might be a small hint, referring to a movie called To Catch a Thief, where Princess Grace acted alongside Cary Grant, who considered her his favorite co-star. In another part of the movie, Cary Grant's character, Peter Joshua, says a line from a famous song called On the Street Where You Live. This song is from a musical called My Fair Lady, which starred Audrey Hepburn the next year, and Grant was offered a role in it. It's interesting to note that Audrey Hepburn was older than Grant's previous co-stars like Sophia Loren and Jane Mansfield. Despite this, she was only 25 years younger than Grant during the making of the film, challenging what people might expect from age differences in relationships on screen. All these details make Charade different from other classic movies, especially considering the age differences between the characters. This adds depth to their chemistry on screen and makes the movie even more captivating. In 1963, Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn teamed up for a movie that later earned a spot in the National Film Registry. The film was a big hit, and many people loved it, including President John F. Kennedy, who was a fan of Audrey Hepburn. Rumor has it that he even watched the movie at the White House and praised Hepburn's performance. After finishing the project, Cary Grant wanted to work with Hepburn again, but sadly, it never happened. Despite the on-screen magic between them, they never got the chance for a second collaboration. Fans hoped for more movies with the charming Grant and the enchanting Hepburn, but it didn't happen. Looking back, the film they did together is still remembered and loved by many. It's a special part of movie history, not just because of the actors, but also because of the story they brought to life. The desire for another collaboration may remain unfulfilled, but the legacy of their one film together is something fans will always remember. In a memorable scene set by the Sane, Alex treated Regina to ice cream, accompanied by colorful boxes of Hollywood chewing gum. Interestingly, Hollywood chewing gum has roots tied to the introduction of gum to France by American Gist in 1944. The brand, created by G.I. Cortland E. Parfit in 1952, remains popular in 21st century France. During the embassy's final scenes, a portrait of President Kennedy can be spotted on the wall of the secretary's office, indicating the film's production during his presidency. In an early scene at the police station, a Lufthansa airline bag can be seen, a nod to the German flag carrier still operating in recent times. In the world of timeless movies, a few exceptional films have left a lasting impression. One such movie features a talented actor who played a significant role in its success. Directed by a renowned filmmaker, this movie holds a special connection to the director's personal life, adding an extra layer of interest to its story. Despite facing some hurdles, this film continues to captivate audiences with its charm and suspenseful plot, solidifying its status as a classic in cinematic history. It serves as a reminder of the enduring appeal of a well-crafted story and memorable performances. So, whether you're a fan of classic cinema or simply enjoy a good movie, this one is definitely worth checking out. 
In a memorable moment from a beloved film starring two Hollywood icons, one character humorously references a famous song from a well-known Broadway musical, adding a delightful layer of connection to the story. This playful nod highlights the intertwined nature of cinema and stage productions, showcasing the talents of the actors involved. The movie stands out not just for its star-studded cast, but also for its clever dialogue and subtle references, making it a timeless favorite among fans of suspenseful romantic comedies. In the late 2010s, thrillers with intricate plots and numerous twists were commonplace, making it unsurprising for a modern viewer to suspect every main character, including the widow, of involvement in the money scheme. Ned Glass, who played Leopold W. Gideon, shared the screen with Cary Grant for the second time in this film. Glass had previously taken an uncredited role as a ticket seller in Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest a few years earlier. During a scene set at the embassy, the characters had a choice between chicken and liverwurst sandwiches. These selections likely mirrored the quintessential post-war American luncheon staple Underwood Meat Spreads, which included flavors such as deviled ham, chicken, and liverwurst. Such products were commonly stocked at embassies abroad. The movie, with its convoluted plot and unexpected alliances, keeps viewers on their toes. The pairing of Cary Grant and Ned Glass adds an interesting dynamic, and the subtle details like the embassy sandwich choices offer a glimpse into the post-war culinary preferences. In a pivotal moment of the film, Audrey Hepburn accidentally spills ice cream on Cary Grant's suit. The ensuing dialogue, where she uses the term assassinated, and he opts for assassinate, raised concerns for Universal Pictures. The film coincided with the aftermath of John F. Kennedy's assassination in Dallas. Fearing audience sensitivity, the studio swiftly redubbed the lines, substituting them in every theater across America. Today, both the original and revised reels may still be in circulation. On the Baytox Mouches in Paris, Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn share their first passionate kiss. As the boat glides under a bridge, plunging into darkness, parallels with Hitchcock's cinematic style emerge. Director Stanley Downen's nod to Hitchcock, reminiscent of the tunnel scene in North by Northwest, adds a subtle layer to the film's intrigue. Cary Grant initially declined Stanley Donan's offer to star in the movie. However, recognizing the quality of the role, he eventually accepted with one condition Audrey Hepburn had to be the one chasing him, not the other way around. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the intricacies of the making of this classic, revealing the meticulous adjustments made to navigate a delicate post-assassination era and the subtle nods to cinematic influences. Each element, from the altered dialogue to the carefully crafted scenes, contributes to the unique charm of this timeless film.